All right, guys, I said it would be quick. So we're back and we're moving towards the forest, except if you're on YouTube, then it's been a day. Sorry about that. <laughs> so refreshed right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we went and took shower and ate and all this stuff. Uh, we'll take yeah, a longer break here on awful. Twitch during hours two and three. So that'll be a normal size break. <laughs> so uh, what's the plan here? You want to go like into the jungle? Uh, you want to like get off the I, off the path? Yeah, I think my plan or the, the plan that I was proposing is just to not be on the roads so that people could see us so clearly and try to use the brush on the side as a way to, if we are going to be attacked or if there is something that will attack us, we'll see it yeah. before it attacks to us. Get, to get closer to the village in cover so we can yes. scout a little bit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, did you want to stop and, uh, and take a, a closer look, uh, maybe with Baron's uh, guidance at the, uh, the elephant's uh, bones? Or do you, uh, do you just want to head for the village? Now? I think maybe from, you know, it, is, is, as we're across from it, maybe just look, but I don't think we should approach it. Especially okay. with what Baron was saying of, you know, diseases and all that stuff. Like, okay. we're probably pretty afraid of that. So let's, Baron. I'll have you make a make an investigation check with disadvantage because you're you're kind of just passing by. You don't have a chance to like kneel down and like look at the bones specifically. Um, so make a make an investigation check as you uh, as you pass by it, and okay. you'll take the lower of the two. Yeah. So okay. Nice. Yeah, it's hard to say. There's there's broken bones and and scratches on them. There's there's blood kind of like splattered around that's long dried in the in the heat. But there's no way to know uh, from where you are uh, how this this noble beast died. We'll yeah. uh, we'll just make note of this in the report. And let everyone know that perhaps someone's killing elephants. Let's not bring it up when we get to town. Yeah, it might, it might upset the people. Yeah, okay. let's try to let's first try to get close and see if we can see what's going on in the village, and then if it looks safe, we can then approach the villagers. Sounds good. Yep. So. Uh, Maybe ten minutes passes in the in the length of time it takes you to get from the the elephant's body to the to the village, and the closer you get to the village, the more obvious it is that something is amiss because this time of day, uh, you know, studious the, the village folk should be up and doing things. You should hear the sounds of uh, people talking, children playing. Like there's there's nothing. There's just the sounds of the jungle as you uh, as you get closer. So. You approach the, the kind of furthest edge. Um, the, the village occupies a, a space around the, um, the edge of the, the river. So they're sort of bounded by the river on one side and the jungle on the other in this little pocket of cleared area that they've, they've cut down. Um, and uh, you come to a, a place where there are, uh, there are huts to either side of you. So you come to the, the beginning of the village and uh, yeah, everything is just like quiet. Um, there's no outward sign of calamity. It's not like there was a fire. The, the huts are all in fine shape. Um, the nearest one to you, uh, its door is just kind of hanging open. Um, and, uh, it, it appears like it appears that the, the villagers have just up and left from, okay. And we can like, we have no sense of, uh of them being in a house like it just looks like they've left because there's doors open and things like that yeah like there's 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 no one around and um there's uh yeah there's no no sign of no sign of life um yeah you don't normally like in a village like this there'd be like dogs uh, kind of like in the street looking for scraps like even the animals kind of seem to have mm -hmm. disappeared <clears throat> Something is definitely not right here. I think, uh, Velomir, you should try to stealth up and see if you can look inside some of the buildings and see if you can spot anything. Perhaps before you go in, Velomir, I should go up and look. You want to go first? Is what you're saying to me? Uh, I kind of like smile back. And you guys have seen me do this before, but I'm like, I'm not going in the town. And then uh, you see like the wind start to change around me and start to swirl below me. And then I just start like levitating up into the air. Uh, and I just want to see if I can like see everything in the village from super high up. I don't okay. know what, um, uh, I, I don't have the spell levitate uh, up. So you'll have to yeah, tell me how here. quick that happens. Let's take a look. Actually, I can just look it up in roll 20. It's in the SRD. Okay. Um, so levitate, which is a product of your being in Aaron So, So, um, one creature or object of your choice that you can see within range rises vertically up to 20 feet and remains suspended there uh, for the up duration. Up to 20 feet, okay. Yep. So you can Starting go up to... Cool, man. I like it. 
you can levitate up to 20 feet. Um, and uh, if, if you try to levitate someone that doesn't want to levitate, uh, they get to make a constitution save, but obviously you want to. Yep. Um, so you, uh, yeah, you begin to, you begin to float the, the winds sort of swirling around you. And how, how obvious is this, is this effect? Is it like a, a twister like picks you up or is it like, are you standing on a cloud? What does it look like? I, I think it, like at first in the immediate area, like the two maybe step back or something as they see just like the wind come out of nowhere in our, in our like 10 foot range or something around us as the wind just kind of like starts to swirl real, real quick, like uh, below me. Um, mm -hmm. But then it's just kind of like a steady gust, like a, like I'm standing on like a plate almost of just wind. And then that's what picks me up. Uh, but right. hopefully I can raise pretty quickly and get down pretty quickly because I don't want to just be like, I'll be back in a second. And then I start raising like an inch. <laughs> and it takes like 30 like minutes for me to get elevator. Yeah, 30 minutes to get me to like 20 <laughs> feet. It's a slow burn, okay? <laughs> Humming yeah. quietly to yourself as you slowly levitate. No, it's it's pretty fast. Um, you could basically go from zero to 20 feet in a round. So you just float up. Yeah. And uh, yeah, from from up here, you're you know you're just above kind of the the second story. So there are some of the stilted villages uh, huts that are uh, on on eye level. Um, I added levitate to your. Yep, um, I just cast it. Perfect. Um, and uh, and you can see uh, again like the 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 clear uh, sort of abandonment to the village. But there are uh, a few things you might be able to pick out from up here. Make a um, make a perception check with advantage. Okay. Uh, oh, there it is. Wait, you moved me to. Whammies. How do I get back from this spell casting? Oh, I hit core. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, you just hit core on your sheet. All right, here's yeah. the perception. God damn it, nine. Okay. Well, you got advantage. You got a thirteen. Oh, um, right. Okay. You have you have a yeah. height advantage. Yeah, I didn't. Okay, that makes sense. All right. So the the sort of key structures that you can see from here, there are like I said, like about a dozen <laughs> sort of family houses. They're like big sort of double size homes where a, a family of you know, eight to, to 16 would live. Um, and uh, you can see the docks from here where the fishing boats are. And that immediately, like, something is wrong because a couple of the boats are flipped over. Um, and uh, there's, uh, there's a temple. Um, it's a, a shrine to the sun, the moon, and the world. And it's, there's obviously something wrong. Like, one of the windows has smoke, like, pouring out of it. Um, and uh, it appears to have, like, paint or something on the outside. There's, like, stuff splashed all over one side. Okay. Um, you can see the largest home in the village, which is probably where the, the mayor uh, and his family would live. Um, there's a little market area and in the market area, there's a, um, there's something like covering it. So uh, they, there's a, a dirty looking kind of like white sheet that's been staked down uh, over the like middle. And it's, it's over top of something uh, in the middle of the, uh, in the middle of the village. Um, the, the last thing, and sort of the most important, I think, is that from this distance, you can see, if you look upriver, the, the sort of clean, like blue water, uh, at some point upriver stops. And the water here is like this murky kind of gray. It looks like, um, like old laundry water. Um, you can see a kind of like froth uh, building up on the um, the banks, and uh, yeah, and this this whole stretch of river is this kind of gross like grayish color. Okay, so I quickly come back down and and uh, as I'm doing that, I say something is very wrong. The water seems to not be clean; seems to be contaminated with something. I'm not sure that happened upstream. There is a white tent that looks to be recently made and not natural to this town. Um, and there is some sort of paint on one of the buildings. However, it might not be paint. I'm just being optimistic today. <laughs> I said, uh, my original plan was to approach from water, but I'm not sure if that would work anymore. Mm -hmm. What do you guys suggest? I agree. I think the water is unclean. I don't know if it is uh, wise. I do not like disease. Do not want yeah. to get sick. Baron, do you know anything about uh, this water? Perhaps have you seen this before or heard of this? You said gray water, murky water. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me roll a history check and see if I can sure. figure out what it is, if I've heard of it before. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, with the ten, like probably not. It's not. Um, like it, it definitely sounds bad. The the river is the kind of lifeblood. Like you're not on the main river. Like the main river is huge. It's it's wide and and rushing. This is a tributary. Um, so you know, it's it's bad. Uh, it sounds like the the frothiness and stuff sounds bad. If you could get closer to it, um, maybe like smell it, get a closer look, see if there's any like dead fish around, you'd be able to get you be you can make a nature check and figure that out. Um, but just the sound of it, you don't. It doesn't sound like there's any historical <clears throat> precedent. It's not yeah. like you know the water turns gray sometimes in this part of the world. Yeah, I I have not heard of this before, so I don't know what's happening. I think we should probably investigate the white tent. It seems out of place in the village. I believe that I should be our next step. Question. Yes. Mm. Um, perhaps let's go on the outside of the village and try to get as close as possible without entering. We never know if there's someone inside the building still. And I start to maybe just like walk off as I say this. Sure. Um, I want to try. So what is the town like? Is it just kind of like random building after building or can we go is there a perimeter that we could go and how close to the white sheet is the perimeter the edge of it yeah so there's a, a big open area in the middle most most villages are built the same way um there's an open area in the middle uh and the the mayor's hut and the temple both open into that central plaza uh, it's often used as a meeting place or a market uh, that's where the that's where the white uh tent uh, is set up um, and then all the village's uh, huts are around that kind of in a, in a circle. And so you're approaching from the north, coming into the village, uh, you'll have to pass through this circle into the center. Um, and then the, on the sort of west side, the river runs, uh, river runs down. And there's a couple little streams that run through the village. Um, okay. As well. All right. Yeah, I think we approach uh, Velomir. I would, uh, I, I tell Velomir, I'm like, as always, if you would please lead us, maybe... 10 feet, 15 feet in front. That would be fantastic. You are much quieter than I. Of course. <laughs> I proceed. And that's kind, of, that's kind of like the general thing that we've always done, but I always have to remind Velomir to do that. Mm -hmm. He's always very reluctant, and he always does the same thing, like, do you want me to die? So, so again, again, again Velomir, is that... Die. It's funny, haha. -ha. <laughs> yeah, is that true, Velomir? Like, I love that we have this, like, outward, like, Zafira making, like, bold statements about how things always are. And then, like, Velomir, is that really what's going on? For That's how that's how Zafira sees it. I don't know. Velomir can tell us if she sees... Or if he sees differently. Mm -hmm. Velomir, uh, like I said, he, he humors Zafira a lot if he, he perceives real danger and, like, something really, you know... Something where he doesn't feel like he's in like a really bad, a really bad way or something like will potentially get him, you know, killed or something like that. He won't behave as such. Right now, we're just you know we're tiptoeing forward. Yes, of course, he's a like he's a he's a rogue. He's sneaky. He's wandered in and he's been by himself before in, in worse scenarios or whatever. According to him, right now, so this is fine for him right now. He doesn't. This is not not that big of a deal. Okay. Cool. Um, so as you're, uh, as you're approaching, um, I think to get into the, the sort of village proper, whether you're going around or, or straight through, uh, you have to cross this little stone bridge, um, that, that leads into the, uh, into the town. And as you approach the bridge, uh, you're walking by a, a hut, uh, it's on your left. Um, and you hear something in the hut. Uh, there's the, the sound of a, a clay pot maybe or something like it being knocked off a table and uh, shattering on the, on the ground. You hear it, you hear it break. Is that just Velomir? Um, I think all of you hear that. Yeah. Cause it's, it's real quiet. You just hear the kind of gurgling of the, of the river. How far away is that from us? Um, it's quite close. It's maybe like 10 feet to your, to your left. Okay. I, I just like I, the other two to make sure they heard that for like a physical mm -hmm. response, not a, not a verbal one. Here, why yeah. don't I show you how close it is? We all nod like we hear it. Yeah, no, immediately when I heard that noise, Elamir just like, like looks at that, flashes to that, flashes to them, and just, you know, in general, since it's been so peacefully quiet. Yeah. Uh, and, and then I guess I start like walking towards the door, not to, not to approach in front of it, uh, just standing there, but to perhaps try to peek in to okay. see what it is. Sure. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. So if you uh, if you approach the door, um, Sophia, you can uh, you can see a bit more in uh, inside. Um, 
I mean, it looks like every little like village hut you've ever seen, right? It's, it's uh, got a kind of like raised wood floor um, made out of local like planks. Um, and uh, there's some, uh, you know, some, some furniture in there. You'd have to go a little deeper in to, to really be able to see, but it's one of the like kind of larger huts. Okay. I, I, um, I guess I turn and without knowing, you know, how these buildings are formed, I turn to the group and say, um, I'm going to go in. Perhaps someone should go out and see if there's a back door. Yeah, Velmir's, uh, like, as he's saying that, Velmir's already moving cautiously around the back to see if there's anything. Uh, uh, as, as he starts to leave, before he turns the corner, I make sure and say, you have 30 seconds, and then I'm entering. And so then I just start, start counting, and I look at Baron and say, would you like to join me? Yes, I'll follow right behind you. Okay. Going together. 20. <laughs> I'm just, I'm wait, just wait, waiting. <laughs> Okay, um, so you can you can feel free to to move your uh, move your tokens around if you want to set up where you're going. So, Vilmir, which how do you want to go around the around the hut? Like you can you can go um, south and go by the edge of the bridge and kind of like go by the the river's uh, edge there and come around the back, or you could go uh, north, in which case you'll come around the the other side on the top. I can't really see what's on the north side. Just, yeah, it's because that's where you that's where you first come in. That's where the map cuts off. Yeah. Gotcha, so you, gotcha. you just kinda enter that area. It's basically just clear terrain. There's a little like these are the first few huts. So Yeah. I'll go not the not by uh, not by the river. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So you want to come around the other side? Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. So you're gonna end up kind of over here. Uh okay. And then Baron the two was going with me or was he going with uh Yeah, Baron, where are you gonna go? I'll go right behind uh Zephira. Yeah, he said he was gonna come with me. Okay. All right. So the two of you, uh, the two of you enter the uh, enter the hut, and um, we're doing this quietly. If you want us to attempt a stealth roll or anything, yeah, the yeah. Please yeah, I'll have, get get everybody. Have everybody roll a roll a stealth roll. Sure, uh, sure. And then we'll just use we'll use those. We should let Baron Baron after you, please, because I mean a dwarf so is now, not going to be the stealth. Baron, piece. before okay. you, Baron, before you roll, what kind of mm -hmm. armor are you wearing? He's wearing the heavy armor. Heavy armor. <laughs> yeah. You have yeah. Dis you have disadvantage on this. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Oh my god, come on. <laughs> you oh, wow, you're all terrible. <laughs> I have a plus. Oh my god. And then I <laughs> like I walk like I walk <laughs> in and then I turn and just hear good junk. Good junk. I fall I'm just like flat on my face because I trip over something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is that I guess that's my question. Like, is that is that what happens? Uh, are you is it that you're clumsy or is it just your armor? Or are you just not used to being stealthy? Like why 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 do you why do you roll so poorly? I'm not very stealthy. I'm wearing heavy armor, and there was something right on the doorway that I tripped right over. Mm. Fortunately, uh, Zephyr was a little taller than me. was able to step over it, but I just quite missed in. Yeah, tripped I didn't it. point it out because I was so focused on <laughs> what's in this room or what's about to be in this room. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah. So the the room that you you first enter, uh, you don't see uh, you don't see anything. Um, uh, anything amiss except that it looks like the the hut has been um, like turned over basically there's a um, there's a, a wooden box that's been opened and turned on its side there are um, clothes kind of strewn around the floor uh, the uh, the furniture like the chairs are tipped over the the room is kind of in chaos uh, and there are um, yeah broken there's broken pottery uh, on the uh, on the ground uh, kind of like right in the in the middle of the room is it dark in here? Or is it well lit? Or um, it's it's day, so there's light coming through the windows. Um, uh, when Baron tripped, I, it made a lot of noise. I assume. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like Velmir, you heard it from the other the other side. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I said thirty seconds, so he knows that we're at least entering in there. I, I would <laughs> think. Um, so <clears throat> at, at when he makes a lot of noise, I wince, but then uh, I do a quick scan of the room. This is these are stairs upstairs, which I can't see. Correct? I don't know where they lead. There's um, another stair. Yeah, yeah. You can you can peek up there, but there's a there's another there's another floor. Okay. Then I very I very like quickly go over here and like raise up my scimitar to see if there's anything about to like come through that door. Okay. Yeah. So you don't you actually see a person. It's the the first person you've seen uh, in the in the village so far. Um, they're uh, they're they're crouched. They're like crouched down on the floor. And um, you can hear um, like a 
kind of like a wet, like chewing sound. They seem to be eating something uh, from the from the ground in front of them. They're like picking stuff up and putting it in their mouth, and you hear them like chewing on it. Okay, and this is when um, I'm like peering my head around. Yeah, yeah, you can you can see them. Just so I, the, I, the, I see them and study them for a bit. Velomir, do you enter at all at this point? Yeah, so um, Velomir, you can see there's a there's a back door uh, here. Um, yeah. I would imagine back. I made it to the door. I mean, what am I seeing on the door? Is it like, does it look like fucked up or? Um, it's just right like an open, door? just like an open door that leads out into the back. There's a, um, like a, a wooden bowl uh, with um, uh, like, uh, some washing in it, like some clothes, but it's been flipped over and there's like wet clothes on the ground. Um, and actually I think from here you see uh, in the, in the back, um, there's actually like a pretty significant um, like blood stain on the ground. Um, it's sort of splattered around to some drag marks and you see um, some footprints uh, in the, in the, both the blood and the, the, the dirt. I guess. I don't know. I can roll perception, see if I, there's anything distinguishing about these these tracks or anything like that, just to see. Yeah, if you want to. Sure, why not? Um, Baron, what are you what are you doing while the, those two are doing that? I uh, go to the other side of the door besides Zafira. Okay. Um, so we're both on both sides of the door. Okay. All right. So from here, you can see that the room that they're the, the they're in um, is a uh, like a kitchen of some kind. There's a, a stone like stove. Uh, there's some some tables. Um, and let me let me just uh, show you what that room looks like. Right. So these ones, the the thing with this room, like it's the only place you've seen a person, and you don't see um, you don't see anyone else, Zafira. But um, Baron, you spot another uh, another figure uh, in the room, um, up in the uh, up in the corner by the by the table here. Okay, I'll roll and uh, that one that one is just standing there. Like he he, it's a it's a man. They're both uh, they're both men. Um, they are uh, they're wearing um, like just traditional villager like summer clothes, which is to say like a um a kind of like loincloth like wrap. Uh, they don't have any shirts or or shoes or anything on. Um, and yeah, there's the one crouched down, uh, eating something off the floor. Uh, and the other one is just kind of staring blankly. You just see his back. So both of the, both the people in the room are together on that side of the room. Um, one is here. I'll, I'll grab, um, I'll grab tokens for you and I'll, I'll put them in the room so you can see them. Um, and they're just, yeah, they're just kind of like hanging out in here. Let's see. Some villagers. So you said that back door is wide open. Would I be like seeing the other two inside there? Or yeah, so there's one here, and then one uh, further up that now you can see, um, Baron. Okay, I'll uh, I'll try to roll a perception check to see if I can see if there's anything odd about these people that I can phys physically see. Yeah, like lean around the corner and, and scope it okay. out. Okay. Yeah, make that check. Eleven. Okay. Yeah. So uh, here's here's what happens. You you do definitely notice something wrong. So, um, Velomir, as you come around the corner, because you got a seven, right? So Velomir, as you as you come around the corner to like look into the room, um, Baron, you spot across the room. You spot Velomir step out into sight, and the one that's crouched on the floor uh, can see uh, Velomir, and it like looks up. And so from your perspective, um, Baron and uh, Zafira, uh, you see him stand. Um, and uh, when he does, uh, there's a, like a sort of crunching sound. And you notice that from, from like his elbow down, that arm stays on the ground where he was. He stands up and it just kind of tears off. And there's a wet thump as it falls on the ground. Um, and that noise turns this one around and it turns to look at you. And it's missing its like bottom jaw and like a big chunk of its, uh, of its like the front of its chest. It's like sc scooped out basically. Mm -hmm. Um, and it'd be great if everyone could roll initiative. Yeah. I was going <laughs> to, yeah, <laughs> it'd be, it'd be awesome. Belmer sees this and he's like fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At this point, I, I, you just like very, this entire time you've been quiet and, uh, Zafira is just like, and I thought today was going to be boring. <laughs> and just kind of like go into the room. <laughs> All right. So I've replaced them with some more appropriate, oh, uh, creatures. Oh, I didn't have my, uh, oh, nice. Fucking news be zombies. Nice. Oh god! I didn't have my. Should I re-roll so I have my character selected for the initiative? Um. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So click yeah. your token, uh, and then click initiative, and it will. Uh, it should add. Hey, I rolled the same the, exact thing. Perfect. Add you to the list. Wait. So did I? You gotta click your token. Yeah. There you go. You just, yeah, you just click initiative, right, or what? 
Yep. What am I doing? Yep. Yep. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, but did you click your token first? No. What? Yeah, click token. your token, your little <laughs> yeah. image right here. Oh. And then on, click on initiative. There. I see, I see, I see, I see. Right, let me do it again. That way it ties to the uh, the character. So click the token and then initiative. click initiative uh, character? Yep. Okay, cool. This is the first time using the new character sheets for uh, for Roll20, guys. So we'll get we'll get better at this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've I've played before, but also I haven't I don't have as much time as you know you obviously with Roll Twenty and all that stuff. So well, this is the first time yeah. I've used this sheet. That was I was speaking to the crowd. Yeah. So, yeah, these are these are new um, these are new sheets too. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, so sorry, this should be fifteen, I think. Yeah. All right. So uh, Baron, uh, despite being the least stealthy uh, in the group, um, you have the first uh, you have the first action. You have initiative. So in your turn, um, you can move uh, up to your uh, your movement uh, rate. So it's 25 for you, I think. Um, and you can also take an action, and that's cast a spell, make an attack, um, stuff like that. Um, if you don't want to take an action, you can move twice. You can, you can defer to a, a double move instead. Um, a couple of quick things. Um, characters, if we're using the grid for combat, uh, characters threaten uh, all the spaces around them as long as there isn't like a wall or something in the way. Okay. Um, if you enter a character's threatened space and then try to leave it later, they get, uh, they, they get to yeah, yeah. They get to attack. attack of opportunity, yeah. Is uh, there any sort of flanking system or if like something? Uh, no, but uh, Velimir, if, uh, if Velimir is uh, fighting someone that is also fighting a, uh, another uh, enemy, um, Velimir will get, a, uh, will get a bonus to, uh, uh, to their attack. They'll be able to use, he'll be able to use a sneak attack. Sneak attack, motherfucker. Exactly. So if Velimir is attacking somebody on his own, then something is going wrong. Yes. Yep. Um, let me see. Is there any other immediate combat stuff that you may need to know? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think that that's probably enough to get you started. Dan, I okay. think you're up first. All right. Um, yeah. Do you, uh, can I cast around the corner a spell at the creature? No, right now you can't see. Uh, you can't see either of them from yeah. from where you're standing. You're, you're kind of blocked off, so you would have to move either into the right. room or get a better line of sight. If you ever want to check line of sight, there's a ruler mm -hmm. tool in the toolbar that you can just click and point around cool. um you can also if you want to figure out how far you're moving uh when you select your token if you hold space and then move uh it'll tell you the distance uh, that you moved so you know how much more space you have cool yeah um also if you don't want to go you can hold your action and you can tell me like when this happens then i take my action so if you want to wait for the zombies to do something uh you can you can do that all right uh so the first creature nearest me is the one that is that notices um Bezumir outside? Uh, yes, that's right. All right, so I'm going to walk around the corner and then bash him with my mace. Excellent. That is a thing you can do. Yeah, so when you when you come around the corner, uh, the uh, the creature, yeah, definitely, like, looks up um, and, uh, and seems to notice you. Now, these... Um, you know, we, we imagine zombies a certain way, like kind of shambling and gray skinned and, and all that stuff. Um, these just look like people who have undergone a very serious trauma. Uh, one of them missing an arm and a, a piece of its chest. The other one, um, I think has, uh, uh, some other like bodily damage, but they're not like sallow. They, um, they look like people otherwise, aside from the, the, the wounds. Yeah, they, um, they, don't, they don't look like zombies. They're just fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of them has like um, the one that was eating. Uh, he has uh, some like rice, like still like in his mouth, but also it's been sitting out for a long time, so it's like gone bad. And there's like some bugs in it, and that's kind of like tumbling out of his face as he stands up. Um, and then you approach him and you you give him what for with your warhammer, um, and uh, yeah, you basin. Yeah, and you you hit him. Uh, these things aren't dexterous or well armored in any way, um, so you can go ahead and you can roll your damage. Um, and to roll damage, all you have to do is click uh, in the chat log uh, mm -hmm. where it says Warhammer plus four. If you just click Warhammer, it'll roll your damage for you. Okay. All right. Seven. So a stout, a stout blow. <laughs> um, roll twenty. To hid your your name there for some reason. That's odd. What is yeah. what does that look like, uh, Baron? When you when you do how does how does Baron fight? Are you are you shouting? Are you like what's your what's your deal? Boom! Uh, I run around the corner and just 
just swing my hammer as hard as I can um, right at its head and okay. smash it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a, a splash of blood um, both on you and the table next to the thing. Uh, you hit it in the in the cheekbone and and break a bunch of its teeth and its jaw kind of goes limp and all the food it had in its mouth kind of spills out um, and it staggers, but it doesn't it doesn't shout or or recoil. Uh, its head just kind of like twists sideways. Um, there's a, a sickening crunch. Um, Zephira, what would you like to do? Um... Seeing Baron go in and, and what I understand to have handled this one or is handling this one, I go around the corner and uh, like <laughs> run very swiftly to this one uh, and then just pull out my scimitar and get my, my shield out and just strike at it. Okay. And yeah, as, I, as so. I'm doing that, I, I, I turn to uh, Velomir and say, go help Baron. And then I go in and attack. Okay. All right, go ahead and make your uh, make your attack roll. Twenty five, nice. Nice. Yep, definitely, definitely hit it. No problem. Uh, for eight damage. Eight damage. All right. So, uh, how is how is the way Zephira fights different from the way that that Baron does? Baron was very uh, kind of like yeah. I think step forward and swing. I think Baron is very much uh, like physical in his actions. My my stuff more looks like uh, like a, a performance of sorts. Like mm -hmm. everything's very showy, and like when I pull out the scimitar, I it, like the sword kind of I do the pirouettes with it and shit like that. Almost like I'm a fencer, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and the the scimitar kind of acts as an extension of my arm at that same st uh, same style. Uh, and so, almost the you, you, like the the sword kind of cuts through the wind as well when it strikes. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So does your sword have any like special, like, do you, do you have like holes in it that whistle when you like swing it around or? Uh, yeah, I think are you... uh, right above the hilt, there's uh, like four holes on the side of the back of the blade. Uh, and cool. so, yeah, it definitely has like a whistle when it strikes. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So the, the blade uh, strikes true, uh, you know, slashes deep into the, into the body of the, the person. And um, in the same way, you know, you, you cut him and, and like living blood, like hot blood spills out onto your, uh, onto your legs, into the floor. Um, the, the, the person staggers back, but shows no sign of, uh, of uh, being frightened or startled by the, by the harm. Yeah. I put my shield up and just say, these are resilient. <laughs> then All right. Yeah, so the, the dead thing in front of you throws itself uh, forward, uh, trying to claw past your shield. Um, it's uh, it, it's not so much like trying to like bite you or anything, but is like hammering on your shield with its arms and kind of groaning, uh, trying to like knock you down or knock you back. Um, so it's going to make a slam attack on you, and your armor class is a nice high 18. So let's see how it do. Oh, I got 22. All Damn right. It. Damn it, Adam! So, uh -oh. <laughs> so the force, the force of the blow, um, like sends a, a, a shock through your arms. Right, like this thing hits hard, harder yeah. certainly than any malnourished peasant should, and uh, deals you three damage uh, as you are you are bludgeoned by the by the beast. Okay. Um, three damage. Cool. Gotcha. Yep. Uh, and then Bairn, uh, similarly armored, uh, though. You're you're much stouter, right? It's not about dodging; it's about taking taking the blow and letting your armor absorb it. Uh, yeah. The uh, the dead thing takes a swing, and I got a seven. So uh, it I think it it kind of with its one arm and it's like this the sort of bone protrusion from itself. It's like hammering at you, but your um your armor is just too too much for it, too thick, and it doesn't mm -hmm. uh, yeah it doesn't hurt you. Uh, cool. All right. Uh, so Velmir. Uh, it is your turn. Your uh, your friends are beset. Elmer by. steps in, and having seen um, having seen what's it called um, fucking Zif What the fuck is your name? Zephyr. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take that hit. He was going to go for uh, to help Baron, but he sees that and decides to conjure uh, a little fireball and nice. and throws it at the zombie, um, giving cool. uh, giving uh, Zephyr a heads up. Just like saying, like, watch out, you know, like throwing, throwing a, not a huge fireball so to not set the house entire place ablaze, but to. Yeah, please don't set the village on fire in the first show. No, 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 I'm aware. I'm aware. <laughs> so we, can, we can step out of dodge and burn these motherfuckers if we need so, to. Okay. <laughs> Some magistrates came to town. Oh, what happened? Well, anyway. they burned the village down. Um, I don't give a fuck is, about this hut. Yeah, the, th the thing is, you could very easily just file a report that was like, it had to be done. 
<laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's true. It's burn from space. All right. So you're going to produce flame, uh, mm -hmm. which like Zephyra's levitation ability, uh, you're able to, to conjure a ball of fire and throw it at a, at a foe. Um, so uh, you can do that from here. You want to attack uh, this one? Yes. Okay. So on your character sheet, uh, mm -hmm. you have a produce flame uh, attack. That yep. uh, should be listed. Uh, this is our first one. Just go ahead and uh, go ahead and click it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Your 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 flame strikes true. Uh, you you conjure up this ball and hurl it at the uh, at the creature, and it, it splashes. Now, is this like a um like a napalmy kind of fire? Is it is it like a firework? Does it what does it look no, like? It's a little bit it's like a napalmy sort of fire with the intent of you know seeking to its target and setting them ablaze. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So it yeah it hits the thing, and immediately the 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 area is full of the the smell of of burning uh, flesh crisping skin and the uh yeah the fire takes uh, takes effect um if you click on where it says produce flame uh mm -hmm. plus four that'll do damage for you all right so six damage to the to the creature nice um yeah, so it, it doesn't seem to notice as it's as its flesh uh burns and uh and peels um you've you've definitely harmed it physically but it's uh it's it's still Stout and ready to fight. Um, Baron, it is your turn. All right. Um, you, have a, you have a villager trying to jab a bone spur into your face. Yeah. I'm going to cast a spell. I'm going to cast a Guiding Bolt. Okay. So one thing to be uh, one thing to be aware of, casting Guiding Bolt is a great, great plan in this instant, but um, when you make your attack roll, you will do it at disadvantage unless you can disengage from the creature that's that's interfering with you. So it's you know it's grabbing your arms and trying to like keep you from from casting spells, and uh, you can still cast it, but you'll be at disadvantage unless you try to move away. If you can get out of its attack range, you can do it at normal uh, roll, but that would mean that would mean that it would get to get a free a hit off. Breath. Yeah. The only way you can avoid the free shot is by not taking an action to disengage first and then moving away. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think, okay, I'll think I'll save my spell, then I'll just hit it again with my hammer. Okay, sure. Right. Yeah, it seems like it's not too hard to, uh, not too hard to hurt. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you hit it for sure. Nice. And three. And another three. Okay. All right. So yeah, I mean, even the the first blow should have should have killed it. It's I mean, it's just a person, but there's obviously some other stuff going on. But yeah, you just you keep pummeling away at it. It's not making any effort to get out of the way, and you're being rewarded with splashing blood and breaking bones. But uh, <laughs> it, it it won't it won't fall. Uh, Zafira. Uh, yeah, I just once again strike at the other one. I I turn to see to make sure that that one's being dealt with and Baron's not fucking collapsed on the ground. <laughs> just cause yeah, Baron, Baron sure. seems to be doing okay. I mean, he's kind of got his back to the wall and this thing is on top of him, but it can't, it can't get through his armor. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I'll just, uh, I'll just attack again. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. 15. Yep. And for eight damage again. Nice. All right. So, uh, you lash out at the thing. And let's see how much. Uh, all right, so you, uh, you you thrust your sword into its chest. Like it has a, a moment where it's not pulling on your arm. You get a clear shot and you you jam your sword into it. Okay. Um, and I need to make a roll real quick here. Okay. We're about to contract some sort of disease, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, you you jam it in. You feel like you've you've. It's very, you've killed people before. Yeah. Right? Like this is not this is not unusual. You know what it feels like to shove your sword into someone's heart. You feel the like the the sudden resistance of that dense organ, and yep. your sword goes right through. You pierce his heart, you yank it out, it's a splash of blood. Uh, but he doesn't he doesn't die. He doesn't fall or or anything. He just stands there kind of like staring at you uh with this this kind of blank look on his face. Now can I make a what role would it be? What would I look? Would I know anything about how to kill a zombie? You could make uh, you could make an arcana uh, check okay. um, if you wanted to. Um, you could uh, you could make a religion check because the the you know the religions of the world teach things they're about. Yeah, the they're both ends. I'll I'll make a uh, I'll make an arcana check. Okay, sixteen. 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, you've heard stories, right? Like one of the, one of the main uh, sins of the, uh, of the, the arcana is that, um, you know, the dead once dead stay that way that we don't, you know, you know, we don't bring people back from the dead unless it's mandated by the gods, in which case they were never truly dead to begin with. Right. Um, you know, the, the body works a certain way. And if it doesn't, there's obviously something at, at play here. So these, yeah, these things are animated by some, some negative force. Um, to kill them, the, the, to, to put them to rest, because the priest wouldn't say you kill them, they're dead already. To, to take them to their proper rest, um, you, can, uh, you need to apply the power of the gods, right? The, the gods' chosen magic, uh, as, as given to their servants, will. Send them to uh, send them to to bodily rest. Okay. Um, hacking away at them with your sword might work. You might be able to stop the animating force, but it's it's not. That's not what you would have been taught necessarily. Okay. Yeah. So I I upon I can't move right. I can't disengage now. Can you disengage in combat uh, in this? No, you took your action. You can action, move. Yeah, but yeah. You can move, but it'll get to attack you. Okay. Yeah. So I'll disengage next round. So upon like hitting it, seeing that, I, I say. This person should be dead. Please, uh, Baron, if you would, cast a spell or two. <laughs> and I, like, put up my shield. <laughs> These intemperate creatures need to be taught a lesson. Right, right. Uh, all right. So, yeah, you, you raise your shield just in time as the, uh, as the dead thing throws itself against it. So uh, here's an attack on Zephyra. Uh, nope. Yeah, you're able to defend yourself. And Baron, uh, you cast a quick glance sideways, and then the thing hurls itself against your, sh your shield. But... To no, uh, to no effect. So yeah, you're you're holding up okay. So uh, Velimir, it is your turn. And Velimir, you definitely hear me say like cast a spell, but you don't. I don't know if yeah, what you're like, gonna do is gonna help. <laughs> more fire. <laughs> <laughs> you can interpret that as you want. <laughs> So I'm gonna look. I gotta look up something real quick. I think I want to just double check to make sure uh, we're giving you your sneak attack bonus when you. Uh, yeah, when you I was wor not worried about that, but I, I was thinking about that when I. Does he? Does he get? Because I know it's a finesse or a ranged weapon. I don't know if that counts because it's. Yeah, I don't. I don't think spells thing. count. Yeah, spells not, don't count. Weapon. Any other weapons thought. count. That's why I okay. Mean. Yeah. So you're you're not gonna get sneak attack on your on your produce flame. It does have to be a, a precise weapon or a, a missile attack. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, huh. I don't want to light um, the entire place on fire and leave. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice if you could get mine off of me so I can yeah, cast a spell. No, I, Velomir's, yeah. he's not going to, uh, thinks briefly about lighting the entire place on fire and telling the party to get out of Dodge, but just in that moment, it's not a pretty, probably not a good idea, um, just in case hurting his, his teammates. And decides to throw another fireball at the the one to the left of him, uh, the one on the this thing, this one. Yeah. Oh fuck! Look at that oh, shit. That's, cool. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. Wait, what? <laughs> Do it again. Oh, oh, the fire thing. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> fuck, I, yeah, I thought you like crit, but it's like no. Adam's just showing silly DM shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go cool. ahead and go ahead and make your produce lame roll here. Nope. Okay. Uh, yeah, you hit. Yeah, ten's fine. And you deal uh, seven damage. Uh, all right. So yeah, there's a there's a flash of fire, uh, and uh, the creature's uh, back ignites, uh, starting to uh, yeah, sort of burn it up. Um, but it's uh, it still stands uh, ready to fight. Um, Velimir, do you want to move? Or are you okay where you're standing right now? Velimir is totally okay where he's at right now. <laughs> all right, Baron, it is your turn. All right. Um... What are my options to disengage from it? So you have two choices. Now you're, mm -hmm. you get pretty good armor. Um, so you could, if you want to just say, I don't care, take the free shot and you can walk away. Um, or you can, instead of doing an action this turn, you can disengage and then walk away. Okay. I think I will just move away and let it get, take its attack advantage. Okay. And just yeah. how far away would it have to move? Um, as long as you are outside of any of the squares it's touching. So this, this is like one of the close ones or back to back with, uh, Zephira up here would be I'll okay. I'll go back to back to, to with, uh, okay. Zephira. All right. So as you move, it attempts to slam you, uh, and it hits. 
So you are you're rewarded for your uh, your your moving away by getting punched by the zombie, and you take seven damage. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ! Um, so yeah, the the thing um, it just lashes out as soon as your shield is down, and I think I think it goes from kind of like this sort of uh, stolid state of standing there kind of staring while it's like back is on fire to as soon as you show any kind of weakness, you turn away at all. It like lunges angrily and uh, bashes itself against you with both hands. And uh, yeah, there's a sudden shock of pain and then numbness as you get uh, hit by the thing. Um, but you get to finish your, uh, you get to finish your turn. So if yeah. you want to uh, cast a spell. I want to cast a guiding bolt at it. Okay, cool. Um, so let me... I'm just gonna make sure you took your damage. So you got you got four hit points left, right? Yes. Jesus. Okay. It's getting rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna turn it on so y'all can see each other's hit points. Okay. You Great. should see a little red, yep. the red bar appear over yep. everybody's head here. Fantastic. There we go. Thank you, All right, Baron. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, okay, so Baron, you wanna now you wanna guiding bolt this thing? Yes. All right. So. We haven't seen uh, we haven't seen Baron's uh, haven't seen Baron's magic yet. Uh, what does it look like when you uh, when you cast the spell? I grasp the holy symbol um, that's dangling around my neck and point it towards the creature, and mm -hmm. a burst of light comes from it and goes charging towards the creature. Nice, yeah. And uh, temperance part of uh, part of temperance's uh, domain uh, is is health, um, is uh, like growth. And so um, I think that we see in the background too, like there's maybe like a couple of little like potted plants or something. And mm -hmm. the the plants, you know, dead and overwatered as they are, they start to like kind of like rise up and like grow a little bit uh, as the room fills with this brilliant light. I like it. Um, so uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, go ahead and make your make your attack. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Shit. You. Oh, nice. All right. So you crit, uh, which means that when you roll your damage, it'll roll the dice for you twice. Okay. Uh, go ahead and uh, and click where it says guiding bolt. We'll oh my god! Whoa. Holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> it's the fucking twenty four <laughs> damage at level one. Uh, uh, <laughs> Goddamn damn. lightning so bolt from hell! <laughs> yeah, seriously, good work. All right. So he. Uh, yeah, you, you hit it with the bolt. That's more than enough to to expel the thing. Um, what uh, what does that look like? Does it does it burn up in the holy light? Does it vanish? Does it disintegrate? Like what what does that look like when it, when your your magic comes in contact with a thing that should the, not live? The bolt hits the, the the creature and it seems to just vanish. And mm -hmm. then from the inside of the creature out, you see it start getting brighter and brighter, and it starts from the inside out bursting into flames, and then it just collapses and disintegrates on the floor. Cool. Yeah. So like where, where once a peasant stood now dwell only ashes as it sort of like drifts to the ground. So yes. as that happens, I turn and say, Baron, there's no blood there. How boring. <laughs> uh, and then it's my, is it my turn. Uh, it, uh, it is. Yeah, so I turn. say that and then I, um, I like to put my shield back on my back in some sort of, I don't know, badass looking move. However, that looks badass. Uh, and I take my, uh, I want to, so I stabbed its heart, and Zafira knows the only other way to kill someone is to cut off its head. And so mm -hmm. I want to do, I want to like flip over this thing, but have my scimitar take its head off in the process. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So you can it. move. You've got enough movement to end up behind it, uh, and you can you can make your attack as you uh, as you pass by. Okay, great. So um, I move cool. behind it. Yep. And here is the scimitar roll. Sixteen. Right. Yep. You hit. Six. Get Six it. damage. Okay. All right. So let's see. And basically, I'm just trying. I like grab both sides of the scimitar as I'm like leapfrogging over this thing and put its head in between and just like cut it off like a guillotine. Thanks. All right. Let's see if it works. It does. Yes. Yeah. So your your leap over the creature uh, severs its head uh, from its body. Um, a much much messier approach than yeah. There's, than there's blood everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you just yeah, you basically just spin your scimitar around its neck like a can opener, land on the other side, and then its head tumbles to the ground. It falls to its knees. Blood gushes from its arteries because again, it's not a zombie in the sense that it's like a, a corpse bound thing wandering around. It's just a person uh, that should be dead. And yeah, blood pools at Baron's feet as the thing tumbles forward and, and spouts arterial gush. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, and then as, as quickly as the uh, as quickly as the battle began, it is over. 
Um, Belamir kind of looks satisfied with, with with everything, and you know, the assuming he's had this flame on his you know fingers that he's been conjuring, and it just goes. He's just like, well done. Nice. Um, okay. Well, well, your way was sure messier. Well, <laughs> there's always two. Pro or there's always two ways to solve a problem. Uh, and then I, you see, most people will like either clean off their blade or like strike it in the air so it cleans off. But literally, mm -hmm. air just like comes off my hand and like cleans off the blade itself. And then I just mm -hmm. uh, sheathe the scimitar back in. Um, nice. It's like one of those Dyson air blades. I yeah. Like yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> cool. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, then I turn and say, um, perhaps we should go upstairs before we investigate any further. Also, Baron, you seem to have uh, yeah. taken some I, wounds there. Are you doing okay? I, I am needing of healing. Um, is there a way to heal myself without casting my cure wounds? Uh, no, you can, you can take a short rest. Uh, if you did that, you could expend your hit dice to recover. Uh, so you could say we're going to hang out in this building for an hour and, and recover that way. Um, or you can take a long rest, which is you recover all your hit points and your spells, but it requires eight hours of rest. So it'd be nightfall by the time you're, you're done. Um, or you can, uh, you can cast a spell. The healing skill is for uh, keeping people from uh, dying of blood loss once they've lost all their hit points, but doesn't recover uh, HP uh, for them. Okay, I, I think uh, I'll, we should take a short rest and I'll just use my hit die to recover. A little yeah, bit okay. maybe. Short rest. Yeah, be just, good. I just need a minute because from that- In a bad blood. way right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah, okay. that's fine. Um, so what, what preparations do you want to take for your, for your short rest? Um, we, you know, you, we definitely you bar the doors. Further. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we bar like bars we, the door that he's closest to. Yeah. I, I go over and start flipping these tables over to create some sort of obstruction here. Uh, and then I'll, I'll definitely like peek upstairs, but I'm not going to walk all the way up there. Okay. Um, yeah, because it's probably a good call to look upstairs. Yeah, before. just to see if we need to barricade that off. Mm -hmm. Totally. Okay. Um, so upstairs uh, appears much like, like downstairs. Um, several rooms. It's where people sleep. So it's kind of like a, they all sleep in one, one main room. There's a bunch of beds uh, laid out on the floor. Um, but it looks like it's been kind of ransacked uh, too. There's like a, a chest turned over and the, the room has been, uh, it looks like a robbery, right? It looks like someone busted in and stole everything in the house and made a mess of it when they were, when they were here. Okay. But there's nothing, there doesn't seem like there's harm. I checked the closets and all that stuff. If there's any. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these, these are like fishermen so, village okay. peasant huts. So they, they really don't have, you could you poke at some of the bed rolls, but there's no, there's nothing hiding okay. up here. Yeah. I come back down the stairs and once again, she, the scimitar and, and say, uh, Baron Deer, there seems to be some beds upstairs, if that would better suit your rest. Yes, I, I definitely need to lie down. That thing hit me pretty hard. I need to rest. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Velomir, if you uh, are not going to be taking a rest, perhaps you would want to watch the stairs. Just staring directly at Zephyr. <laughs> 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 As in, like, obviously. <laughs> I, I just... Okay. Okay. Very good. Yes. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, I will see you in about uh, an hour or so. And I walk up to one of the beds and just like pass out. So, so Baron, um, you you pursued the the ridding the world of these uh, these undead creatures with a, a considerable fervor. And I know that yes. that's tied to your drive. So mm -hmm. uh, you can go ahead and, and mark your inspiration. There's a little circle. If you click it, a little dragon will appear in it, and that'll mean that later you can spend it. It's a it's a currency now. It's binary. It's turned on. You can turn it off to get advantage on any roll. So if a big roll is coming up, tell me before you roll you want to spend it, and you can, you can have it. Okay. <clears throat> Um, also, uh, everybody gets, uh, you take 33 experience, uh, for the creatures. Um, this down. The experience is just, oh. and, uh, yeah, it's top, should be at the top right of your character sheet. We got 33. Uh, yeah. 33. Sick. And do you want to, uh, do you want to do anything with the bodies before you take your short rest or during? Oh. Um, yeah. Well, I've already said that I was upstairs asleep, so I'm just going to go by that. Doors anything too, otherwise, I'd be burning them. Uh, <laughs> right. Is there any sort of, is there any sort of uh, like chimney or anything, or any sort of uh, like sort of fireplace in this place at all? No, all the all the cooking would be done um, outside. Uh, there's like a fire pit out back, um, but it's it's pretty small. 
Um, you could throw some bodies on it if you want to. All right. Um, yeah. I guess I just quickly unbar the doors, put it out there, just to light them on fire, just you to can drag them, make a make a pyre. Okay. Yeah. So so Baron, you you take a nap and you fall asleep to the smell of of burning flesh uh, outside. <laughs> the best way to fall asleep. Um, really. Delicious. Yeah, delicious burning flesh. Smells like pork. Um, which which doors did you bar? Uh, this the inside one or the outside ones? Like this one or that one? Um, well, if we're upstairs, I would say we we barred this one, but it wasn't these two right here. Uh, sorry, I'll ping these two right here. Okay. Yep. But it wasn't. You know, we moved a bunch of tables and stuff. But at the bottom of the stairs, we put we basically I I just like would grab a dresser or anything that were in those rooms that weren't the beds and just toss them down the stairs to try to create as much traffic as possible from getting up. Okay, cool. Um, so you're going to roll, you're going to spend your, your hit die, right, Baron? Yes. Okay. So you, you get to roll it and you add, I think it's your con modifier. I don't think you add your level. I'm just going to double check real quick. Um, so this is basically, you're, you're taking a short breather just to see if you can recover some uh, some health here. Resting here, we got 186. Uh, a short rest, yes. Yeah, so you recover the roll of die and add it to your con mod, and you get hit points equals to that total. So what's your, uh, what's your hit die, a D8? I think? D8, I believe. Okay, so um, go ahead and just in, in roll 20 roll, uh, you can go slash R space, D8 plus two. Big the whammies. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Easy. So you get back uh, five. five. Uh, What's your, are you full? He took uh, seven before. I think he's two off from, from full, right? Yeah, two off from full. So almost all my HP back. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming along. Cool. All right. Definitely worth resting. Mm -hmm. Fucking first encounter taken down to three health. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it's that's pretty so scary. Then, then I turn around and do a crazy one. crit. So, you know, yeah. Worth so do we want to, do we want to take a break while our characters take a break? Should we do that? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. We're yeah. a little bit short, but this, this will be fun. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll take another break. So I got two hours left to go here on the premiere of Court of Swords and, uh, there won't be much time before we get back to episode two as well. So stay tuned. We'll have more news on that towards the end. We'll bear back guys for more Court of Swords right after this. <laughs> 